Happy St. Patrick's Day. On this day, green beer flows from taps, corned beef and cabbage fill kitchens, bad Irish accents abound, and parades line the streets from small town Ireland to big city Boston. It's one of the biggest party days of the year across the globe. This celebration of Irish pride has taken the world by storm. But what exactly does the celebration of St. Patrick's Day have to do with St. Patrick? And why is Patrick the patron saint of Ireland? And what's the big deal about snakes? Make sure you're wearing something green, and let's dig into the history of St. Patrick, another dead Christian you should know about. St. Patrick is one of the most popular saints of the church, and, surprisingly, we actually know a fair amount about his life and work, since he recorded him himself in his autobiography titled Confessio. Born in Britain sometime in the 5th century, Patricius was the son of a deacon and the grandson of a priest. Even though he was raised in the church, Patricius actively avoided the beliefs of his family, going so far as to later describe himself as completely ignorant of the forgiveness offered him in Christ. At 14, Patricius was kidnapped from Britain by a gang of Irish pirates and forced into slavery. It turns out that those years of hard labor as a shepherd drove him from his irreligious beliefs and led him to pray to God for his deliverance from his captors. One day, about six years into this involuntary servitude, while shepherding his owner's fields, a voice called to Patricius, telling him that a ship was ready to take him home. Believing that this was the voice of God, he hightailed it more than 200 miles to the port where that ship was docked in order to finally escape. Once back safe and sound in his native Britain, Patricius would go on to study and become the priest we are familiar with today. But why exactly would Patricius, or St. Patrick, be celebrated in a land that he fled the first moment he was able? As mystifying as it may seem, Patricius actually chose to return to the country of his captivity, and that's where his story gets a bit legendary. While living in Britain during his education, Patrick tells of having another vision or dream much like the previous one. In the vision, a figure he names Victoricus gives him a letter with the title, The Voice of the Irish. The voices of the Irish peasantry echoed through the parchment as he read the letter, and Patrick could actually hear them begging him to return to Ireland. He vowed to do so upon the completion of his education, and after becoming a bishop in the Roman Catholic Church, Patricius fulfilled his promise and returned to Ireland where he spent the rest of his life. Throughout his 40-year ministry, it is said that Patrick traveled the countryside, preaching and teaching, converting and baptizing upwards of 100,000 Irish. Legends tell of Patricius baptizing 1,000 individuals in a single day. His legacy remains evident throughout Ireland. Patricius had his hand in the construction of over 40 churches, and an entire country was rescued from the darkness of paganism by the gospel. All of these things are certainly amazing in and of themselves, but Patricius is remembered in popular culture for one legend in particular. A walk through your nearest wooded area will lead you to encounter many an interesting critter, but the one many of us are most squeamish about is the snake, the long, slithering reptile that is the focus of many a nightmare and phobia. But if you were born and raised in Ireland, the reptilian foe of people across the world would be completely foreign to you, even today. Legend has it that this is the work of St. Patrick himself. While on a 40-day fast at the top of the hill, the story goes that Patrick was repeatedly harassed by snakes. Frustrated with this distraction, Patrick took his staff and drove all of the snakes out of Ireland and into the sea. There is, of course, absolutely no historical evidence that this is true whatsoever. What the evidence points to, instead, is that there might not have been snakes in Ireland for quite some time prior to Patrick's ministry anyway. Nevertheless, this miraculous action of St. Patrick is portrayed in stained glass and church murals throughout Ireland. The legend certainly abounds. St. Patrick died in the late 5th century in the location of his first church in Saul. St. Patrick is said to be buried in Down Cathedral in Downpatrick, where a recent gravestone marks his presumed grave. 
As he was such an early figure in the Catholic Church, St. Patrick was never canonized officially, but instead is generally recognized as a saint because of his holiness, his influence in the church, and the miracles that are attributed to him. That doesn't exactly explain the whole shamrock thing, though, does it? The Irish culture is filled with many symbols. The Irish harp, the clotter ring, and the Celtic cross all make us think of that country's history. But perhaps none is more famous and far-reaching than the shamrock. This green plant is found throughout the world and has come to symbolize not only good luck, but also the Irish tradition and heritage. While traveling the Irish countryside, St. Patrick would use this familiar and sacred shamrock as a teaching tool as he went through the villages converting the Irish pagans. What exactly did St. Patrick use this shamrock to demonstrate? The Holy Trinity, of course. One leaf each for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three in one, one in three. And all that is a reason why St. Patrick is another dead Christian you should know about. Thank you for listening to, or watching, Dead Christians You Should Know About. Dead Christians is a production of Higher Things Incorporated. All research, writing, and recording for this episode was done by me, Patrick Sturdivant. And all video animation was done by Sandra Madden. For more information about dead Christians you should know about or higher things, visit our website at higherthings.org. Happy St. Patrick's Day.